First things first, what type of home ownership do you have? Are you a renter or a homeowner? Homeowner. All right. And what type of structure is it? Is it a single family detached or is it a duplex, a multi-unit condo or, or an apartment type? Single. Single family. And what's your approximate move-in date? Move-in date mm -hmm. into the home? Yes, sir. Uh, be uh, 1978. Okay, that's quite a long quite a time. Yes, <laughs> 1978. Have you always lived in Cook County, like since bef before that? Yes, entirely. Entirely? Mm -hmm. Oh, so born and raised. Born and raised. Okay, so how did your family end up in this community? Uh, most of them were sharecroppers and all, and uh, they... Uh, Moved from farm to farm, mm -hmm. helping out in the uh, late 1800s mm -hmm. and uh, early 1900s. So, uh, and it was back then part of Berrien County. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this was this was home for the majority of our uh, our maiden mm -hmm. name family. So, all right. That's very interesting. I was I'm from the Philippines, so I moved here in 2015. Oh, that's great. I'm, I've got actually some people I've talked to from the Philippines. Philippines. Mm -hmm. Like just on social. Social, okay? Because yeah. I was mm -hmm. gonna ask like I'm, your I'm job. I'm always glad to meet people from everywhere. Okay, that's good. And now I live in Tifton because I went to UGA. I won't hold that against you. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. I feel bad. <laughs> Every time I talk to people, you know, who work here and live here, and they're like, oh, so you're from here. And I'm like, yeah, I live in Tifton. They always tell me I should move here in Cook County. Maybe I would. But right now I am renting to own. Okay. Mm -hmm. cool. So can you describe to me the kind of house that you live in? You said it's single family detached. What about the roof? What kind of roof do you have? How many stories and bedrooms and all that? Okay. It's, uh... Um Single metal roof, mm -hmm. uh, three bedroom, two bath. Uh, it's uh, uh, has siding, mm -hmm. uh, metal siding, and all. So uh, well insulated. Uh, like I said, it's been built for a while. Mm -hmm. it's good solid. I mean, uh, structure. Uh, all right. So, have you ever invested in solar, either on the rooftop of your home? Anywhere in your property as part of your business or part of a program through your utility? No, uh, I guess, you know, I've, I've been interested in it. I've kept up with mm -hmm. it, uh, especially since the uh, when it first started because in rural Georgia, you mm -hmm. know, this slow to catch on and you, the opportunities weren't there like mm -hmm. in other parts of the state or country. And so uh, uh, in the past you know you didn't really have a market unless you just bought some uh, small unit mm -hmm. not enough uh carry enough voltage to run your whole home but you know it would supplement your uh, energy mm -hmm. that you used and also uh but it's it's a good concept i don't, don't get me wrong yeah. I, you know i'd probably be willing if it got into that point that we more of that would could be used that mm -hmm. type of energy uh, here in this part of the uh, Cook County and mm -hmm. part of Georgia, you know, I think it would open eyes to a lot of people and let them understand, you know, where it could save them a lot of energy. Yeah, there's an upstart cost, mm -hmm. but there's an upstart cost in buying a home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> okay, so you said that you'd be, if given a chance, you would be open to adoption. Oh, yeah, anything to, you know, that would... Uh, help lower the cost mm -hmm. of day-to-day uh, -day, uh, money that mm -hmm. you would need to put out towards energy use yeah. and all. It's cleaner sources, too. Okay. You know, so. That's awesome. Do you think living in a single-family detached home, not having to worry about other people or other family living with you, would that be one of the factors as to why you would be open to solar adoption? Would that even play a role in it? No, I Not don't really. think so because in reality, you got to look at if it was a multi, if I lived mm -hmm. in a multi complex facility, you know, uh, with multiple owners or mm -hmm. renters, it seemed like it would be better for that 
for them too because yeah. you know you're splitting the cost throughout and uh, your savings are probably even more I mm -hmm. would imagine so you not having solar right now because you said you have a metal roof was that decision made for you or did you make that decision yourself I made it myself. You made it myself. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I do know, you know, metal roofs, mm -hmm. they're great and all that too. And, 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 you know, even back in the old days when homes were built, you know, you had, in this part of the country, you had metal roofs. Mm -hmm. Everybody did, majority of people. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it does collect a lot of heat. Because yeah. this part of the country, we got heat yes. and sunlight, a lot of it. Mm hmm so now you have the map of the United States of America in front of you. With your pen, I would like you to draw or put a mark, check, or X, whatever it is that you do, where you think the people who are highest adopters of solar energy, where do you think they live? Can you anywhere on here? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Mm -hmm. Most of what I would think would be in the Sun Belt and okay. the West Coast. Yeah. Sunbelt and West Coast. Yeah, well, West Coast, because you got, see, I've lived out. Mm -hmm. You got all this area, but see, it rains so much in Washington, Oregon, mm -hmm. but they do being the type. People that live there are really conscious of the uh, eco, yeah. so they would use it a lot too, but this general area here, mm -hmm. I think, would use it more. Than the rest of the country, uh, Florida, yes, too, up in this in this area because you have so much sunshine here mm -hmm. year round, and all, and plus you got the uh, conservative uh, economics that uh, are involved on the West Coast. You know they're ahead of most of the country anyway, mm -hmm. and then you do have I would think some areas in the Northeast. Mm -hmm where um, you got some of the larger populations that they would probably try to push it to and the large um, skyscrapers and mm -hmm. structures and all to help out in energy costs. But um, I would think this area would be the biggest. In terms of like their jobs and their social groups, I mean, you already mentioned they would probably be the eco-friendly people. What about like income-wise? Income-wise, you know, uh, that's... Especially, you know, you start looking at the South mm -hmm. where traditionally incomes have been low mm -hmm. and all. Uh, you know, a lot of that's changing now, but still it's taken a long time to get to that point where you got a, a lot of people from the Mason-Dixon line mm -hmm. that still work for minimum wage or lower. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that has a lot to do with it because... You got to feed your family. You got to keep them uh, their day to day uh, needs supplied. So if that takes and health care, mm -hmm. uh, daycare, that takes a lot out of your what small amount of your income you had. So you don't have the ability to Before. go out and buy a system. Mm -hmm. You know, unless that system was some way supplemented by some agency mm -hmm. or. Or, or through a uh, uh, a grant, grant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that would help them out. I think more of them would probably try it then. Okay. And use it. Okay, so now you have the state of Georgia, a map of the state of Georgia in front of you. So same question, if you could write in there or make a mark, where you think the highest adopters of solar energy live, and what kind of social groups or economic groups or what kind of people are they? Um. Uh, you know, a lot of people think about, and this is true to most Georgians, mm -hmm. they know, they make fun of it, but we have two Georgias. Okay. From Macon down, you have Georgia, Georgia. Georgia, from, Georgia. From the north of uh, the Macon mm -hmm. uh, line, you have Atlanta. Okay. And it's suburbs. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to look at it that way. Uh, your economic growth, your money, your... Uh, uh, well-beings, your your up-to-date structures, your uh, uh, companies that invest in uh, your power companies that look like and, and invest into future power and all. Most of you, this is going to be your area for uh, your uh, 
solar panel use. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you don't have people that's been trying it further south, and and I think it's catching on a little more, you know, because I know we have a few here in uh, Ada mm -hmm. that actually use it. A lot of people don't understand it. Mm -hmm. If they were more educated in how it would, how it's used, what it can do. For the community and for their sales, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, so uh, I think that would be the biggest, as far as uh, money, uh, income-wise, the people uh, falls back the same way. Southern Georgia's farm area, mm -hmm. rural area. You know, uh, you do have some spots like Albany, Valdosta, Savannah, mm -hmm. Brunswick, and all. Red Cross that do have a larger population and their um, financial growth is a lot better than most of the rural parts of Georgia. Um, and then above that making line, you know, that's where the money's at. Yeah. you got so much money flowing in that part of the state, you know, not just company-wise, city-wise, uh, municipalities and individual incomes are a lot higher. So you're going to see that type where people are more open to uh, opening themselves up to other avenues of power sources. So. Okay. So both um, for the both maps, like let's start with the map of the United States first. Do you think those people living in that area that you mentioned would be high adopters of solar energy? Are those group of people any different or similar to your own social group? Like, are they more different or more similar? You know, uh, I don't know if this is the answer you yeah. want, but yes, they're in difference in type of their environment that they were grown, you mm -hmm. know, they grew up in, you know. And that's what makes us unique as a country, but still, uh, you, we're all Americans, but then we're unique in the, to where we tie ourselves or our roots are at. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have some more, even though the uh, populations are not as dense out in the, uh, the middle Sun Belt and the, uh, uh, out towards the West Coast before you get to California, uh, the people there, I think, are more being that they don't have the resources that the east part of the United States has. They have to be more worried about conservative, mm -hmm. and especially in uh, power use, uh, water use, anything. Yeah. So uh, in the power source, you know, a lot of theirs is generated through dams, mm -hmm. waterways and all that help generate, and plus... They have a uh, lar those large uh, windmill farms okay. mm -hmm. that actually help them out too. So I think you know they're as a group of people uh, think more f about that concept mm -hmm. of you know alternate energy sources and all. Mm -hmm. Where the East Coast, I don't think, you know, the yeah, it's coming on board, but I don't think, especially, you know, if you look at rural Georgia and all, mm -hmm. uh, and the South, uh, they're slow to come on board. So same question with the map of the state of Georgia. So we, you put there half and half, the above Macon and below Macon. So do you think they're different than your social group here in Cook County? Like the high adopters? Yes. Of course. Of course. <laughs> They are a difference. I don't care. We're yeah. Georgia's, but yeah, just like the United States, we're all mm -hmm. American citizens. But in Georgia, you got so many people that's uh, in northern Georgia that have migrated here from other states. Mm -hmm. So their way of thinking over a period of decades has helped change the way the homegrown Georgians mm -hmm. think and how they uh, adapt themselves to mm -hmm. the uh, energy use environment um, and different, uh, their personality has changed mm -hmm. a lot. Where the southern part of the state, you know, that's, you know, still, you know, mom, dad, family, church, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a little slower 
but things are changing, you know. It's just going to take time. Yeah. And all, but, yeah, there's a lot of difference in it. And it's not saying it's bad. It's just a twist. Okay. All right, so let's, lastly, let's talk about your close friends who live here in the state of Georgia. Do you know anybody, even if it's not close friends, like family or just acquaintances, anybody that you know that adopt rooftop solar energy? Well, you know, I guess being that uh, in my uh, field of work, mm -hmm. I get to meet a lot of people and uh, business owners and all. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I do know some businesses here in town that have lean towards solar Sorry. energy. And I see more of it on the newer companies coming into mm -hmm. the county. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have some individual friends that uh, have some at their uh, residential, their mm -hmm. homes and all. Not a lot, but there are some that I do know. Mm -hmm. uh, they are friends, and I don't have anything, anyone in the family that I know of that's actually using solar energy oh. at this time. So, um, if you're going to rank yourself 10 very knowledgeable in solar energy, one not so knowledgeable, how would you rate yourself? Probably a seven. A seven. What about Cook County in general? Probably a five. Mm -hmm. You know, five, six, somewhere in there. 